Lord, they don't want religion, God. They want a relationship, God. Father, they want, Father God, you to fill them, Lord, to overflow. They want, Father God, deliverance. They want increase. They want healing. They want restoration, God. They want everything, God, you have for them, Lord. So I thank you right now, Lord, all those that are here, God. Everything they have to the day. They receive everything, God. Or in some, just need your peace right now. Some just need your understanding right now, God. Some just need your love.
Lord, sit down and start moving forward. Amen. But I believe right now is the best time to be impressed. If you're being impressed, you know what? It's to release that oil, that anointing. Amen. Don't let him win. Amen. Don't let the enemy win. He's trying to make you stop doing what you've been called to do. That's it. Amen. I had a dream yesterday or two nights ago. And I was in the house and we we're packing, we we're packing our vehicle and getting ready to move and to go to go travel and do some ministry, ministry and stuff like that. You know, keeping the business. And then at the moment we begin to do that, we get to pack, all of a sudden it gets real dark. And my friend, you know, I'm thinking the boys are in the car waiting already, and I'm, I'm checking everything in the house, making sure everything's blacked out and all that. And all of a sudden, I feel the wind pick up. And all of a sudden this tornado's coming. And I can feel the foundation of the house moving. That might be you, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure all about that right there, you know, but I believe the enemy's coming to try to move or shake our foundation, and our foundation is Christ, amen, but we have to understand, you know what, the moment we step out to do the things of God, you better believe that we're coming to attack and try you, you think you're ready, you really want to do this, right, and what do we say, yes, because no matter what, if we're doing kingdom business, it's God's job to get us through. Right. All we have to do is be faithful to God, amen, and, and be about His business. And we don't think He's going to attack us, but you know what? We have the victory no matter what. As long as we're about His business, we have the victory. But see, the storm, the, the tornado to come, the thing that come to try to press us or try to knock us down are only temporary, only there to get our eyes off of what God said and focus on that. Amen? So, Pray, man. I feel like there's some heaviness or some burden or something like that. Amen. Anybody feel like that? Burdens? A heaviness? They don't belong to you, God says. You just lift your hands around. I want you to just release it to God. Say, Lord, I give it to you, Father. Whatever it is between you and God right now. But whatever it is, I want you to take a deep breath in and I want you to let it go. Because, you know, it don't belong to you. You should be about kingdom business, amen? And God will be about yours. Father God, I just pray right now for everyone up here, Father God. I just pray a release right now, Father God. A release right now, Lord.
steps it up, and He will. I don't care how bad it gets or how bad it seems. He cannot win. The only way He can win is if He convinces you you've lost. And that's it. We can be with water up, up, above our heads when they want to drown. But we have to know that God's going to rescue us anyway. Amen. I'm telling you, I, that's what I've got in my scriptures tonight, this week, is that the enemy's trying to trick us. He's trying to say, Janetta, you've lost. <laughs> you've lost. And I'm going to make it. But what did God say? All we have to do is look at our past victories and know if we didn't it back then, we can do it again. Amen? Because remember, it's not by our strength. All we're doing is stepping in to what He has already done. Think about it. That's all we're doing. Every battle that we're going to face, He already knew before time began that we had to go through these things. But yet He still gave us a victory. All He's waiting for us to do is see the victory the way He sees it. That's it, amen? I'm telling you, all He does is play mind games. That's all He does. Amen? You ready to give your tithes and offerings? As we receive today's offers, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs. Jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses. Raises and bonuses. Benefits, sales, and commissions. Benefits, sales, and commissions. Favorable settlements. Favorable settlements. Estates and inheritances. Estates and inheritances. Interest and income. Interest and income. Rebates and returns. Rebates and returns. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Finding money. Debts paid off. Debts paid off. Expenses decrease. Expenses decrease. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Doors being open. Doors being open. The favor of God. The favor of God. Chasing me down. Chasing me the down. The favor of God. The favor of God. Making a way. Making a way. Where well, there seems to be no way. Where well, there seems to be no way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. How many do we get tonight? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Amen. Children, church to the back. Amen. Y'all line up right here by the door. What we got, teacher? Then come on back there, okay? Two, one, three, three. I started 
છે contacts on like yeah i can see i can see all the way back to the air conditioner now so don't go to sleep because now i can see y'all right i usually don't like take my glasses off because y'all make faces and i don't want to see the face <laughs> just care just like not me go back at two one and three i mean two and three then the lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain on tablet that he may run who reads it for the vision is yet for an appointed time but the end it will speak and it will not lie though it tarries what does the next part say wait for it wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry y'all yeah, like out in a hundred feet for a few minutes though it tarries what man i wish i was at creflo dollar's church because when he does that everybody says it it's really loud So Angelisa, ready? <laughs> Try to take off some more. Though it tarries, wait for it. <laughs> Y'all scared to wait for it? Because it will surely come. Thank you. Surely come. When we get a word, we need to wait for it. Now, what does wait mean? Wait for it. Now, if I went to Pizza Hut, which I love to do, and, amen, and eat some wings on Wednesdays, which I love to do. <laughs> What happens when I go and I sit at my table? Gotta wait. Your waiter. They wait on me. Right? So the way God is talking about, he's saying, wait, don't just sit there. Wait, sir, do what God is telling you to do. Wait for your blessing to come. Don't just sit there. Well, pastor, don't ask me to do nothing. I'm never doing nothing again. That's not the kind of way he's talking about. We have things that are stored up in heaven that belong to us, but because we're too busy sitting on our hands, we haven't been waiting on the Lord, serving God, doing the kingdom business, that it stays stuck and dormant. And we're blaming God. We heard Nancy James Sunday talk about seed time and harvest. She talked about our words, what we say can produce fruit. What fruit are we going to get? The fruit that we, we produce out of our mouth? That's a horrible thing to think. If we sat around and thought about everything that comes out of our mouth, and we produce what we say, oh my Lord Jesus. Those bad kids, boom, they get locked up. Right, we wouldn't even talk. Right. God knew that. That's why he says, look, the only thing I'm going to do, the only thing I'm going to do is what's in the Word. So when they speak the Word, that's what I'm going to do. Because if I let them speak and say whatever they want to say, they're going to say some crazy thing. Oh, I wish my husband was dead. I can't stand him. He gets on my earth. If he gave us that, Then we'd be crying, God, why did you take my husband? <laughs> It's the seed that came out of your mouth. What you spoke. But he says right here, he says, wait on it. Don't be in a hurry. Lord, have mercy. That's what we are. We're a microwavable people. We want it in a hurry. We want to get to McDonald's. And even when it's not on time at McDonald's, we get all mad. I'm going to mm -hmm. it. McDonald's takes forever. Then, 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 then. Yeah, but then you complain that, that they're putting it into the microwave. Make up your mind. Then you go to Whataburger and you're going to have to wait for your meal and you're complaining. You know they make it fresh. Right. Actually, they don't all the time. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing. They're going to microwave it. They, they, they pre-cook them halfway on the grill. And when well, you order it, psh, it don't take but a few seconds. Mm -hmm. See, people lie. Don't do anything <laughs> Wait on it. Don't be so aggressive in trying to make things happen. Don't be trying. If God told Elvira she's going to get a house and God's going to give it to her, 
How dumb is she going to go and say, you know what, I'm going to go put down on this brand new $150,000 house. God didn't tell you you were getting a $150,000 house you paid for. God said it was going to be free. Not once, not twice, but three times. But if Elvira doesn't stand in the will of God and doesn't speak what God is saying, she will forfeit. And it will slow the process down. It will slow the process down. And then she's going to be wondering, well, God, you told me through the prophet that came last year that I was going to have a house and they were going to buy it for me. Several prophets. But why is it taking so long? Maybe there was some unforbidden fruit somewhere. Not to say that's, you know, Elvira knows I'm not talking about she's also, you know. But I'm saying she needs to cultivate that every day. And she used to put water on it. God, you said in your word that you will give me the desires of my heart. You said in your word that I will be blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed coming out. You said in your word that I'll even own vineyards that I didn't even plant. You get what I'm saying? Because he's bound to this. He's not bound to, oh, I'll get in a new house. He's bound to his word. Not quiet. Hebrews 1 and 5. Did y'all get that? What are we supposed to do when we're waiting on God to do something for us? Wait? What does wait mean? Serve. Serve. But we don't like to serve. Because when we have to serve, then that means we have to get out of our comfortable seats. And our comfort zone. Why do I got to be doing that? Why can't they have Angelisa do that? Why do I have to be up there to unlock the door? Why can't they have Carol do that? Why do I have to... And then you just start sowing seeds in your own vineyard, in your own garden. And then you wonder why when you you try to plant a tomato, you get a turnip. Because you planted the wrong thing in there. And then we're waiting for God to give us more finances. We're waiting for God to give us the new vehicle. We're waiting for God to, to give us the car. We're waiting for God to do this for our children. We're waiting for God to do all this and all that. When in reality, all we've been doing is spewing things out of our mouth that are not of God. How can we get it? Am I okay, Miss Carol? <laughs> Amen, she says. Hebrews 1 and 5. For to which of the angels he did ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be my son. Who is he talking about? Who's going to be God's son? Jesus, right? But if we're sitting with Jesus in heavenly places, why don't we see ourselves as God's son or daughter? See, we want God to do things for things for us, but we can't even imagine who we are in the kingdom. We can't even think about ourselves even being in the place with Jesus, because we're still in our flesh. And how do you mean to go to children's church, sir? He's like, what? If not, the prophet will try to speak over me. You heard it. That's what happens. If you have babies in here, they want all the attention. Bye, Trey. They just probably going to stay there with them. God will work the work out for us. Why? Because when we get into Christ Jesus, we become Jesus. So everything that we have need of becomes what we need because Jesus is us. But if we don't have the mindset to understand that the vision and plans that God is talking about here, He is talking about His vision and His plans. We think it's our plans. Oh, I want to do it. No. I, can't, I just, my plan was not to be in Alabama all the time. My plan is I love Texas. But my plans and His plans are different. When he tells me to go, I have to go. I have to be obedient. I have to do what God says. But you know what? When we can understand that God the Father looks at us and says, that is my son. That is my daughter. And he's talking to the angels. 
So that tells me when I speak and say something, I have the same authority to talk to the angel to do for me. But the angels don't understand gibberish. Do for me right now, angel. Dude, that's what I tell my daughter. You might listen to me, but the angels in heaven aren't. The word of God is what moves them. The word of God is what tells them to go do, to go here and do this and do that. Because if we used our own stinking words, we will get ourselves in trouble. That's why God said, you know what, I'm only bound by my word. Because if I let the people speak whatever they want to speak, there'll be a lot of dead people around. Because we'll be slewing our enemies. That's why he says, love your enemies. Because when you love them, then God handles the rest. So he'll work it out. Stay focused. Stay focused on the vision. If God has given you something and he's told you something and you know that it was of God, hold on to it. Don't let the enemy come and steal it from your fingers. I mean, grip it like like you, like, grip it like I would a hot wing on Wednesday night. Nobody's going to come take that for me. That's my hot wing. You know what I'm saying? People, you see how we grip our cell phones? We have our cell phones with us 24-7, seven, seven days a week. We don't even put them down to go to the bathroom. Oh, here, amen. But yet, we won't grip the Word of God like that. We won't hang on to the Word of God when we need it. We'll just let it fall to the floor. And we don't put it in because oh, we just don't need it today. What if you have a Bible in the restroom? And, yeah, you can take your phone. Or read your Bible with your phone. Let's get the Word of God and let's put it in. Because when the enemy comes, and he will come, and he has come. And you know what? Sometimes he's come, and I wonder why people call me crying. He's come because you let him in. Because let me tell you something about the enemy. This is what he does. He will sneakily, be sneaky, that's what I mean, it's my word, sneakily do this to your door when you're not watching. If you have a pastor's name about you, and did you hear what they're talking? And then you let him in. And he's just walking in and out, just destroying and doing whatever he wants to. And you're just letting him in. And then you wonder why you're dealing with what you're want, what you're dealing with. It's because you let him in. Why? Because you have not gripped the word of God so tightly that that's what you use when he comes in. Did you hear what Pastor said about you? Yeah, you know what Pastor says. She loves me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? See, the enemy will try whatever he can to whisper, I always say it, sweet little nothings in your ear, to make you think you are less than what God says. But if you have the Word of God, and you've gripped the Word of God, and just like Jesus, God told the angels, that is my son, that is what God is whispering to the angels about us. That is my son, that is my daughter. They have kingship. Everything on earth, they have dominion over angels. And as long as they're speaking my word, then you go forth and you do exactly what is said. But why don't I have what I need, God? Because you're grabbing the wrong horn of the altar. You're not grabbing the horns of intercession through the word of God. You're grabbing the horns of, oh my God, what am I going to do, Jesus? That doesn't move God. The Word moves God. God, I'm all alone here, God. Your Word says that you're you're the Lord from the beginning of the foundations of the earth, and I can come to you. We need to rephrase everything that we say and everything we do, and we need to stay focused on the promise that God has given us, which whatever is in the Word of God. People say, you know what, I just can't read the Word of God. Don't. Don't read it. But the moment that it comes to where we can't have this word of God, you're going to be looking for somebody that had enough in there, in them, to help you. Because there's going to be a time where we don't have this word of God anymore. It's already starting to happen. Blackout countries. They're blacking out the word of God. People getting underground, having to preach the gospel, crying. And Marcy said there's a video on YouTube where the people were crying because they were receiving Bibles. 
And we just take our Bible and throw it on our dashboard till next Sunday. God is requiring more of the people of God to stand up and fight in this hour more than ever. He's requiring us to take the vision that He has, which is the Word of God, and to take the vision and put it in so deep and wait on Him. Wait on Him means to go and subdue the kingdom of God here on earth. Wait on Him means to save the lost. Wait on Him is, it doesn't mean us. It means to take care of His kingdom business here on earth. That's what it's about. Whatever you focus on is what you'll reproduce. That's a scary thought. I hear somebody saying, oh, I can reproduce money if I focus on it long enough. Yeah, you probably can. And the more you focus on that money, the more that money will overtake you and it becomes your God. Yeah. Whatever you focus on, that's what you'll reproduce. Our eyes need to be fixed on God. Our eyes need to be fixed on God. We don't need to be looking around at everything else around us. We don't even need to be looking at everybody else around us. We have a problem as people that we want to see what everybody else is doing. It's true. Well, let me see how they're doing it over there on that side of the field. Hmm, they got tomatoes growing. I don't have tomatoes. I have cucumbers. Maybe I need some tomatoes. So we start looking at somebody else's field and we start judging ourselves according to somebody else. It's time that we refocus that on what God says about us. If we're too busy looking at what God says about us, it doesn't matter what nobody else does. We'll stay focused and when God is doing what He needs to do in our lives, we'll be able to wait on Him and get it done. But what happens is we focus on everybody else. Woo! About that. We focus, oh, Janetta, and yeah, 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 yeah. And pastor down the road over there, they got na, 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 na. Pastor. Right? Am I okay? <laughs> we start focusing on things that don't even matter in the kingdom. Because you know what matters in the kingdom? is souls. I don't care if we have orange carpet and red carpet. Probably in Periscope, everything looks orange in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter. What matters is souls. What matters is when we wait on God, it means we're working in the kingdom. It means we're out there and we're, we're telling people about the truth of God. We're telling them about the vision of God. We're telling them about the plans of God. We're telling them about the purpose of God. We're telling people, you know what? You don't have to live like that. You don't have to be like that. You can be what God has for you. Be all that you can be. Laying a foundation in your walk. Right now I believe that all of us are laying foundations in our walk. And it's hard to lay a foundation. Very hard. Because you know what? Who's the first people that come to, to lay the foundation? Anybody that knows? You know what I mean? When they're laying a, a concrete slab before the slab goes up, who does it for the very first job? The sand and the dirt people, right? So you got a bunch of people digging a hole. That's like excruciating back pain there. They're digging the hole. They're digging the trench. Ooh, they're digging the hole. They're digging the hole. They're digging the hole. And then somebody will say, oh, that hole's not big enough. That hole ain't right. Throw the dirt back in there. Start over. Oh, y'all off by a few minutes. I mean, a few measurements. Move over. They dig the hole. They dig the hole. They dig the hole. And then they get tired. I'm going to just sit right here. And I'm going to just... They get tired. Right? Now, if they get paid to do that job, and they don't do it in time, what happens? They lose the contract, right? So what if God tells you Lay this foundation. It's going to be hard work. You're going to get dirty. It's not going to be what you want. Because sometimes you're going to dig a little bit over to the right when I need you to dig over to the left. And you're going to want to go and do what you want to do when I'm telling you you got to go back this way. And if you start digging the trenches and it gets really hard, I'm just going to sit down. Never knowing that the cement that's above you that's going to be laid out is going to be your 
your children, and then the foundation is going to be laid out as your grandchildren. But you just didn't feel like digging today. I'm just tired. I don't care what Pastor tells me. I'm just going to sit right here and drink me a bottle of water. I'm not going to wait on God. I'm not going to do anything else in the church. I'm just going to sit out in my seat. Everybody else is digging their ditch, their trench for the foundation of God to go on it. And they're working hard and they're reading their word and they're praying and they're pressing in and they're doing everything. They're taking the horns of the altar and they're fasting 21 days and they're listening to, to praise music all day, all night. And they're doing what they have to do and they're praying and they're pressing and they're praying and they're pressing. And then all their family gets saved. But you're sitting in your seat and your family is still going to hell. But I'm just tired. I know, I said that three years ago. I'm just tired and I don't want to do this anymore. And I don't really care. And if I would have kept digging and digging and digging, where would my sons be? They would have never did what God told them to do. Because even though the work got hard, even though the things of God get hard. You know why it gets hard? Because God has to press everything out of you that's not of Him. So the oil of God's glory can come out of you. So that He can use you. But it's hard to dig, God. I'm tired of digging. I'm tired of being the only one in my, in my house praying. I'm tired of being the only one in my house doing what you told me to do, God. I'm tired. I'm tired. Well, you know what? Oh, I was going to say it, but we're on Periscope. <laughs> stay tired. Stay tired. And when you stay tired, you just sit down and you drink your bottle of water while everybody else is working in the kingdom and everybody else sees their family being saved. Then you start looking at somebody else's garden. Well, why do they have? And why are they doing? And why are they moving? And why, and why, and why, and why? And all along it's because you're sitting down on the sideline when everybody else was running the football. The whole team was working. And you wanted to sit on the bench by the fan with the water in your mouth. I like me. You didn't even cheer for your team. Because you didn't have enough word of God in you to keep you going. Laying a foundation is hard work. It takes commitment. Laying that foundation. Once you get that dirt dug up and you're doing that dirt and you see your family's coming and they're helping you and they're starting to lay that concrete down, you're like, oh my God, my kids are here. They're working in the kingdom of God and we're moving. Our house is moving. Our home is being blessed. And then all the walls start getting built up because everybody in the house is doing the things of God. And then you see that that foundation becomes very strong and sturdy because you didn't just lay a bunch of junk bricks on the bottom. You tilled that sucker. You worked hard. So when by the time your children come into, into the kingdom of God, they can say, you know what? My parents really are who they say they are. Because that's where we like it, parents. It's one minute we are parents that serve God, and the next minute we're parents that do whatever we want. I mean, Sorry. It's a straight up truth because I know. Because it happened to me. You know, our boys get back from Alabama and they're like, Mom, and da 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 da. And I get so mad. I'm like, Oh my God. Is Pete and Alice still on? I think so. <sighs> How could Pete and Alice do this to me? But you know what it was? Was they were learning to retrain their thought pattern. And we were having to learn to retrain our thought pattern. And they were coming in and saying, Mom and Dad and da 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 da. And you know what? We had to come in and retrain the way we think because we were thinking the old way. And we're still coming in there and washing it with the word. Because we have old names coming from backgrounds of, of religion and backgrounds of just different junk. And it takes commitment. It takes commitment 
to read your Bible. Oh my God. I'm a pastor and I don't even like reading it all the time. I'm like, you really want me to read God? Do you know I'm very tired? Do you know? Yes, that's why you need to read. Because you're very tired and you need it. Because you know what? We're very tired is when the enemy attacks the most. Because we're very vulnerable. We're like sheep left out there to be slaughtered. If you're sitting in the right position and you're and you are waiting on God, whew, when God calls you, you can allow yourself to get revelation when God speaks to you in that very moment. When you're at the place where you know you belong, you know, oh God, I just know I belong. Right where I'm at, spiritually walking. You know what'll happen, Dean? He'll give you a different revelation or something different. And you'll have to move over a little bit more. Because you have to grow. And that's what we don't understand. We think we can stay right where we're at and be okay for the season we're in when God is telling us, no, we gotta grow. We gotta get new revelation in. We gotta get new word in. We gotta, you know, the same old, same old is not gonna get it anymore. For God so loved the world. Everybody knows that one. Even people that don't go to church know that one. John 3.16 is on every football game, every baseball game, everybody. Right? Even worldly people know that. What about the rest of them? Are you a royal priesthood? What about that one? What about putting that in? See, sometimes we have to get to the place where we push ourselves where God is calling us to be by using the word of God. Don't take it lightly. We are sons and daughters of the king. You know what that means? If you're a son and daughter of the king, what does that make you? Princess or a prince, right? Now you can't tell me that Prince Charles and what's the other guy? I just know Prince Charles because he's like the one they talk about all the time. But you can't tell me that Prince Charles did not go to school to learn how to be a prince. They have to learn how to eat. They have to learn how to talk. Mm-hmm. They have to learn all their vows and their is and their ain'ts and they don't learn what they don't like not. They have to learn proper etiquette. They have to learn how to curtsy. They have to learn they have to learn to be a prince. You can't have just fifty cents saying I'm a prince. It don't work like that. They have to be taught royalty. They have to be taught what it's like to be a prince of England. Right? So if they're taught that, why do we not think that we need to be taught as being princess, princesses, and prince, you know what I mean, in the kingdom of God? Proper etiquette? What is proper etiquette? That means, don't be going and talking nasty to people, spitting all over them when you're talking. Talk proper. What does the Word of God say? When it's time to correct somebody, what does the Word of God say? Let's learn the proper way to be sons and daughters of the King instead of being the old people we were, the old rebellious people we were, telling people everything that we want to tell them. We have to work together and receive the passion for the people that God has. You know, we always say, God, you know, send me to the nations. Would you really go? Honestly, if God came in right now and sent somebody in right now and said, look, I need you to go to, um, where did they just have that airplane crash? I need you to go to Indonesia right now, this second, this minute, with no clothes, no hair dryer, no nothing. And I need you to go over there and help them in Indonesia where all the people just got killed from that airplane crash. Uh, let me go tell my wife. Let me go get my money out of the bank. Let me go, I need to go get me a Route 44 before I leave. Let me go, and we start making excuses. Well, let me go do this, let me go do that. So is your yes really your yes, or is it just maybe as long as I can do what I want first? And you know how I know there's a lot of maybes in here? Y'all love me, right? Do y'all love me? Because 
6.58 on a Wednesday, maybe start walking in. Everybody go, what? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> 9.55, maybes start walking in on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Y'all know, am I getting in trouble? Because we got here late today. We got here at 6 ish. Your yes really is not your yes. It's as long as I can do what I want first, then I'll meet you, God. Then I'll show up. Then I'll... If Pastor was to stand up right now and say, every Sunday morning, we turn the air condition on here at 5 o'clock in the morning, who would raise their hand? In all sincerity, all honesty. So your yeses really aren't yeses. They're maybes. You get what I'm saying? We put a restriction on our yeses. A yes is a yes. Not that we would make y'all do that. I mean, we had somebody come do it and didn't do it on time. <laughs> 5.30, not 5. Because your yeses have to be yeses. I'm not doing that to come and tell y'all, Pastor, I want to come Sunday into the air. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when God comes in and says, I need you to do something, what are we going to have to do to get around what we want to do in order to do it? What if God says, go pray for that guy over there? But wait, wait, wait. I, wait, 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 wait. I know him. I went to school with him. I don't know if I can talk to him. Maybe. Not yes, it's a maybe. But, 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 get into that stuttering stage. Like God don't understand everything that we're talking in our heart. God, if you just don't ask me. Why don't you call the pastors and wake them up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pray? Not me. I can't do that. Then your yes is a really your yes. Because lately, I've been sleeping and I've been saying, God, wake up somebody else in our church to pray at 3.30 in the morning. I've been sleeping like a baby. So if y'all been getting up at 3.30 in the morning, that's why. If y'all get up at 2.30 in the morning, that's why. If y'all get up at 1.30, if it's in the 30-ish, it's me telling y'all to get up. Wake somebody up, Jesus. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Why? Because sometimes our yeses are yeses, they're babies. So right now, get your wallet out. We're picking up an offering. I'm joking. Golly! Everybody's like, me money. But you get what I'm saying? How sometimes our yeses are just maybes, and we tell God, yes, I want to do what you tell me to do, God, yes, but only a little bit. Because I know, we do the same thing, we're pastors, we have to go on back and say, oh God, I'm so sorry, I repent, you know, I, I, you told me to do it, and I wanted to restrict you on it. Go to Alabama again? Don't you know it's like 12 hours, and I don't like to drive? Pastor's not driving this time? I like to sleep, and eat some Darcy's on the way over there. But I said yes. Why? Because sometimes we just have to do what God says. We don't know why. We don't know what for. Why? Because you know what? His vision and his dreams are way different than ours. <laughs> oh God, but if you would only, but only God, if you just do this, I don't want to do that, I just want to do this. Can you send Brother Edward to do that? And I'll do this. Don't get what I'm saying? And you know why? Why I'm telling you this? Because we wonder when we're missing it in our walk. We wonder why. Why is it taking so long, Lord? You told me. But well, why are we? Because sometimes we just got to come back in and do a heart check, a reality check, a love check, or, you know, whatever kingdom check he's telling you for the moment. Right now he's telling you, check your yeses. Just check your yeses. Because maybe your yeses aren't really yeses, they're maybes. So the more you read my word, the more the yeses will be easier because you'll say, wait a minute. God said, for greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And you said I'm the royal priesthood and you said that I'm set apart for your purpose and you said that I'm, you get it? And then you start going, oh, okay, I know I can do it because you're doing it, not me. So your maybes become yeses. 
Because I ain't forgot. I'm not going to do nothing for you. I just don't feel like it. I just don't want to. Never mind. Because you've never done nothing for me, Jesus. I've never seen you come and do this and that. He died for you. Is that enough? You get up and you breathe every day of the week. You get up. People are like, oh, you didn't pay my light bill. No, but you're awake, ain't you? You can see the light. Oh, look at this house I'm living in. Oh, yeah, why are you living in that house? Because your mouth gets you in that house. Because instead of saying, you know what, God, I know you blessed me with this house and you got better for me, you knock down what God gave you right there. But what you speak, you, so, breathe. Oh, everybody's cursing me. You are cursing yourself. You are cursing yourself with your own words and you don't even know it. Because what does the tongue do? Life or death. Life or death. So whatever you speak, you can give life to. Well, my husband's a fool. Well, he's really going to be acting a fool. My, my husband, I think he's messing around. Well, hello. He will be now. I think my children are on drugs. They will be now. My finances, they just keep going lower and lower and lower. I don't know what I'm going to do. They will keep going down. Oh, I, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I can't pay my car payment. I can't pay my rent. No, 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 no. You start crying. You start hoping. You start getting depressed. Start getting on breath. Why? Because that's what you're throwing in the wind. That's what you're getting back. Instead of getting, instead of using <laughs> Deuteronomy 28, 1 through, 1 through 8, or 1 through 14, it talks about blessed in the field, blessed in the city, blessed coming in, blessed going out, everything my hands touch is blessed, everything, every my foot tries blessed. Stop talking about your boss. If you're walking on this ground, then you're the ones blessing it. Stop talking about him. Stop talking about your job. Stop talking. Stop it. Oh, these people at work, they're fools. Stop it. You're the number one fool because you know better and you're speaking the opposite of what God is saying. Amen. What is a fool? Devoid of knowledge. But you have the knowledge because you're getting it here. Mm -hmm. And if you say you're not getting it here, well then whatever you're sowing, you're reaping. <laughs> I don't like my pastor. Mm -hmm. Every time he says something, he's always mm -hmm, sowing. My pastor, I can never understand anything he's saying. Sowing. So when pastor and I speak, I'm, wah, 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 wah. that's why you're hearing that. Because you're sowing seeds of discord in your own life. And you're blaming everybody else around you. Everything is a byproduct of what we do. I always tell our daughter that all the time. She wanted to go here and there with her friends. and We tell the boys too. They want to go do this, they want to go do that. And I tell them, you know what? Everything you do, there's a byproduct of everything you do, good or bad. You choose what you're going to do today. What is the outcome going to be for you today? God is telling y'all that today. You have a choice to make. Are you going to stand up and wait on God and serve God and speak only what God says? Or are you going to keep speaking the opposite over your circumstances? Amen? Amen. Periscope, thank you for watching. We love you. Be blessed. We'll see you Sunday morning at 1030. We love you. Bye, Pete and Alice. We love you. <laughs> Turn Periscope off. Oh, we're going to get in trouble. No, <laughs> What? <laughs> How many believe God's a liar? <laughs>